Hi, I'm Stu. Welcome back to another LumaFusion video tutorial. In the second tutorial about Paint X for LumaFusion, we're going to be looking at doing in painting or retouching, as it's kind of commonly known as in terms of Photoshop and photography and things like that. We're going to be using the clone tool, the blur tool, and the heal tool as a suite. Because if you've used Photoshop before, you'll know before we got content aware fill and now generative fill which is AI powered when it came to doing any kind of retouching in Photoshop you never used just the cloning tool you never used just the heal tool it was always a combination of the both and backed up by the blur tool so that's what we're going to do in Paint X today so let's get started so I've got three clips here that are representative of the kind of in painting that you're going to do um, using Paint X obviously a drone shot here a beauty shot portrait and somebody doing yoga as well so if we take this first shot go to our color and effects go to our new plugin panel tap on paint x we're going to use the clone tool to start with so tap on clone now when it comes to brush settings i found so far with paint x that you want to be able to maybe reduce the size somewhat take the softness down so it still has a soft edge but it's not quite as soft as it would be if you left it cranked up now with the clone tool similar to how you would use in photoshop you've got your source area and this is the same size as the brush so you want to position it in a place that's near to where you want to clone and sample from so we're going to sample from this area here and then if i use my fingers and pinch and zoom we're going to paint over this plastic at the edge of the field next to the equipment so i'm going to work in a left to right fashion and then up and down at the same time so coming quite close and then just begin to clone as much now the cool thing about working with video is that you actually can get away with not being quite as accurate as you would with a single still photograph in photoshop now before we track this make sure you've got your playhead at the beginning because as you can see it repositions itself so if we zoom back out again we can sort that little issue just move things over and position it where it should be and then what we want to do is now track it so I'm going to track using the right hand tracking tool and it's just about done. Now the reason why in this example I'm using the cloning tool and not the healing tool is if you do something similar to this and you try the healing tool you'll find that you get weird artifacts going on and they're noticeable. Whereas if we go back to the beginning of this clip here and then just play it through normally your focus is going to be on these two people here maybe the equipment not what's going on at the edge of the field so if we play it through you'll now see it plays really neatly and you just cannot spot any of the duplication of pixels or anything like that because you're looking at the couple so this is a sort of successful way of using the cloning tool to clone out a particular element in this next example i'm going to go into paint x and we're going to use the blur tool which i used in the original walkthrough so we'll track the blur reduce the size somewhat reduce the softness to about 35 38 percent blur range is okay and then what we want to do is make sure our playhead's at the beginning of the clip and then we can zoom in. Now here's my rule of thumb when it comes to retouching. If it's a blemish or anything on the subject's face that's temporary or even the likes of a hair we've got up here that's out of position then by all means clone it or blur it or heal it out of the way. If it's a freckle, as you can see here, either side of her nose, I wouldn't tend to do anything with them. But girls do use makeup and they use things like foundation, which can cover up or soften down freckles and things like that. 
I don't have any problems using the blur tool. I'm just going to decrease the size somewhat. And then I'm just going to go in and soften off any blemishes and any freckles. You can see they just get reduced. And once we've got them in place, we can track to the right. And you'll see by doing this, we're getting a reasonably good track. There we go. We'll just come back out using the zoom tool to fit. Go back to the beginning of the clip. And you'll see if I go in here and switch the blurs off. There's before. And if I go back into our track tool layer, switch the blurs on. There's afterwards. And things are an awful lot more softer. So I tend to err on the side of reducing and smoothing out rather than completely removing, especially if it's a feature, the likes of a freckle or a mole or something like that, or even a scar. Scars, you know, build character on somebody. So if it's a scar that somebody is known for, then by all means, keep it in. If it's a scar that's going to be temporary and is effectively going to disappear, then you can remove it. In this last example, we've got a little black object out on the horizon. Uh, it's a bit distracting in terms of the person actually doing yoga um, on the beach. So I don't know whether it's a ship or a buoy or something, but we want to get rid of that. So we're going to go into our plugin, tap on paint X. And this time we're going to use the heel option, a little band-aid in the middle. And then make sure you're at the beginning of your playhead. Pinch and zoom. I think it's actually a person, a bit creepy. Anyway, make sure that we dial back the softness a little bit. Not too much, but a little bit. Decrease the size to between 10 and 20. And then for the purposes of this, I like to just reduce the smoothness a little bit and that just takes this plasticky edge off the tool. We're then going to go in and we're going to paint from the brightest part of the picture to the water where it's a sort of mid-tone grey. Just get it all lined up, go to our heel tool and just work my way down. You can see the overall effect. Let's track it in now. See how well it tracks. Looking not too bad at this stage. And if we come back out to fit, obviously the yoga instructor is our most important element. And if we now play it through, you can see our emphasis is on the yoga instructor and not on the person or thing or object that's in the background, giving you a nice clean horizon, focusing you on to the yoga instructor. So if you need to, you can obviously come in and you'll note where possible, whether it's blur, clone or heal. Sometimes it's not possible, but for the most part, if it is possible, I try to do everything in one brush stroke. This basically lets me have more control. I can zoom in and up. Just push in a bit further. And the cool thing about Paint X is that you can adjust the settings after the fact. So for example, we could drop the opacity or increase it again. We can increase the softness around the edge. We can shrink the size or increase the size, whatever works. And because we tracked it all already, when we go back to the beginning and play it through, it should play through pretty perfectly, which it does. Again, we're just gonna to go to our zoom tool, zoom out, and then come out of Paint X in this instance. Go back to the beginning and play it through. Now, do you see that little glitching that goes on there? That's just an artifact of the way that Paint X is working within LumaFusion. Once you actually export any one of these in terms of the in-painting that you've done, it will look a lot more stable. So there we go. That's the three main in-painting tools. Clone, Heal, and Blur. If you had enjoyed and found the video tutorial useful today, don't forget to like and share. I will catch you on the next one. See you later.